Hi everyone, this is Angel with Tech Tutelage, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to install Pi-hole on Ubuntu server and how to set it up so you can route all of your WireGuard DNS traffic through it. That way you will have an active ad blocker, improved network performance, and you'll be able to monitor traffic logs on all of your devices that are using WireGuard. Now this video is continuation on the video I made a couple weeks ago on how to install WireGuard on Oracle Cloud. So to be able to follow along, it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and watch that video from a couple of weeks ago, but you don't really have to do that since any WireGuard installation should satisfy the prerequisites for this video. Again, you don't have to be on Oracle Cloud either to do that. That could be done on any cloud provider. The instructions should be pretty much the same. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, go ahead and connect to your server. And once you're on your server, not a bad idea to go ahead and run apt update. That way you'll get all your repositories up to date. And once you have all of your repositories up to date, the next thing that you want to do is just go ahead and run this command here. And that's what's going to install the pile on your system. Let's go ahead and click enter here. And here it's going to run a few checks and it's going to start the installation for you. Here it's going to warn you that this installer will transform your device into a network wide ad blocker. You don't have any options, so you just have to agree with them and click OK. Here the same thing, not much choice. Go ahead and click OK. If you want to donate to them and help their cause, go ahead to that website. On this one, they're going to tell you that you're going to need a static IP address. And since we are running an Oracle Cloud, by default, our local network IP is static, so there's not new have to do. I'm not sure about uh, if you're on any other cloud providers, you may want to check that. But usually once your machine gets its local IP, not the public one, but the local one, usually that IP is static. So I'm just going to go ahead and click continue here. Here it's going to ask you to choose an interface. So go ahead here and select your public interface, not the wire guard. So yours may look different, but if you are on Oracle Cloud, it's most likely going to be same as mine. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And here it's going to ask you to pick upstream DNS provider. So I'm going to go ahead and select Google's, but if you want, you can choose any of the other ones. Basically, this is what DNS will WireGuard use to go and translate those addresses. So again, I'm going to stick to Google. Here's going to tell you that they're going to use the Stephen Black's unified host list with the addresses that's going to block. If you don't want to use that, if you have your own, you can go ahead and select no. But in my case, I'm just going to go with the default. So I'm going to use this Stephen Black's list. I'm going to go ahead and click yes. And you can always change that later. You can add more lists or remove the ones that you don't like you can customize it pretty good so again I'm gonna click yes here and then it's gonna ask if you want to install an admin web interface I recommend you do that and here it's gonna tell you that it needs web server and PHP and all that kind of stuff in order to run the web interface again you have to agree here's gonna ask you if you like to enable logging so now if you don't want to keep any logs you can say no here but for this video I'm gonna say yes so that way you can see how that logging is happening and so I'm gonna just go ahead here and say yes and here's gonna ask you how much logging do you want to do so basically this is the most login you'll be collect if you select zero if you select one it's gonna hide the domains and, and two is gonna hide which clients access what domains and a number three is gonna be anonymous so pretty much no information will be shown in the logs so I'm gonna select zero here that way you'll be able to see everything and then if you decide later you want to change that you can always do that through the web interface so I'm gonna go ahead again click continue and the installation will proceed it's gonna take a minute or so and once you have it all installed, we can go ahead and access it and see how it works. So here on this screen is going to give you some information about your server. It's going to tell you your server IP address, how to access it. So make sure you remember that. So it will be the IP of your servers and admin. And in this case, it shows me my local IP. And that would work if you're on a VPN. But if you're not on a VPN, make sure to replace this IP with your public IP slash admin. And here is going to give you your initial password for your admin user. So I'm going to go ahead here and click OK. And you can see that same information down here. You have your server IP and you also have your password right here. But first thing you want to do is go ahead and change that password because it's kind of hard to remember. So make something easy for you to remember. I'm going to go ahead here and copy and paste this command, the pihole-a-p. And this is the command that's going to help me change my password. And once you have your password changed, the next thing that you want to do is go ahead and open port 80 in your IP table. So I'm going to say nano. Etsy IP tables rules version four. And in here, I'm going to go down and duplicate this line. Make sure you duplicate this line. Many times I hear from people that after they 
open ports in here and they're no longer able to access their servers via SSH. Again, make sure when you do this, just duplicate the line. Don't just replace the port 22 with port 80. So again, we're going to open port 80 and we're going to need that for our web interface because I, in my case, want it to be accessible on the internet so I can connect to it even if I'm not on my VPN. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and reload my IP tables configuration file. That way that uh, change will kick in and my firewall will know that this port 80 should be open. So to do that, I'm going to run IP tables restore and then I'm going to pass here the path to my IP tables configuration file and if you are following uh, this instruction after watching my previous video if you're running WireGuard make sure you, you reload your WireGuard because reloading these rules on your IP tables will break your WireGuard so you need to reload it so you reload all the IP tables rules that WireGuard sets so I'm going to go ahead and run the systemctl restart WireGuard quick command make sure you do that again if you're running your own WireGuard system it's going to depend how you have it set up, but make sure that you reload your WireGuard firewall rules as well. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And now that I have that all set, the next thing that I'm going to do is in my Oracle Cloud Console, I'm going to go here and make sure I have port 80 open here. Again, I'm using that because I want to have this accessible from the internet. So I'm going to go here and I'll say virtual cloud networks and in virtual cloud networks, I'm going to go in here in my virtual cloud network and then I'm going to go into my security lists and open my default security list. I'm just going to make sure that port 80 is open. As you can see, I don't have port 80 open here. So I'm going to add an ingress rule and I'm going to allow the whole internet to connect to that IP. Again, this is not the safest way to do it. So if you know that you're only going to be accessing this while you're on a VPN, you can just leave it without opening this port. Or if you know that you're going to be accessing from your home location only, make sure in here you enter your home IP. In my case, I'm just going to do it through the whole internet. Then here I'm going to say port 80 and I will say PI web. So just the description here so I know what that's about. So I'm going to go ahead and add the rule. And once I have that rule here, now the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and try to connect to my web interface. So I'm going to go here. Well, actually, I'm going to go ahead here and grab my IP first. So to do that, the easiest way to do is you can just run curl if config.io and that will give you your public IP. And then if I go here and enter that IP and we said it's slash admin. Again, you can get that from these instructions. So since I'm accessing it from the internet, I'm going to replace this address with my public address and make sure that it is HTTP. This does not listen to HTTPS and go ahead and reload that. And as you can see, I'm here at my login screen and here we're going to use your new password. So use your password and go ahead and log in. And that's going to bring you to the dashboard here. And you can collect a bunch of helpful information here. As you can see for now, there's not much activity because we just put the server on. Um, but the next thing that you want to do here is, is you're going to want to go here and go to settings. And then here in settings, you're going to want to go to DNS. And in DNS, you're going to want to change this. Here you want to set permit all origins. And that will allow the traffic from your WireGuard interface to connect to the server and use it as a DNS. You will see this warning here that it tells that this option is dangerous, but this is only for devices that are directly connected to the internet and are forwarding port 53. And we do not do that. Even though our servers on a cloud instance, we do not forward port 53. So it's pretty safe to do this. But again, if you want to read more on it and make sure that what I'm saying is true, go ahead and check on that. If you have some concerns, I believe it's pretty safe to do that. This is the way you have to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark here to permit all origins and then once I have that done I'm just gonna go ahead here and click on save and that's gonna save my change um, I usually like to kind of click out of it so then I want to go back and just make sure that my change worked so if I go here click on DNS yep it did work so I should be ready to give it a try and connect to my VPN and see if it's working so now let's do this um, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to let's say CNN they usually have a lot of advertisements on their website so I'm gonna go CNN.com and as you can see 
yeah, I got this big banner here with add. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and activate my wire guard. Oh, and well, I forgot. So once we have all that done, we actually have to tell our devices that they need to use this server as a DNS server. So as you can see in my current configuration here and my Mac, I'm pointing that 1.1.1 .1 .1 and 8888. So I want to change that with this IP. So 10.0.0.245. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to go back to my WireGuard configuration and I'm going to go ahead here. It's going to ask me for my password. If you want to make changes. So here I want to change this DNS. So this is in your WireGuard application. If you currently have a device like me, your computer or on your phone, you're going to want to go to your WireGuard application, click on the edit button there and go ahead and change your DNS server. So you can do that by doing it in here. Or if you are creating a new configuration files for your devices, you're going to have to make sure that you use this IP of your server, which in my case is 10.0.0.245. You're going to make sure that you use this IP in the configuration file of your devices. So for example, if I go to my current, again, you're watching this video after you watch my video from last week, uh, you will know that we put everything in here in this WireGuard directory. So basically when you create your clients, for example, my iPhone, let's see, I'm going to go into my iPhone configuration. So in here, when you created your configuration file for your phone device, for example, you're going to want to enter and replace this with your server's IP address. So in my case, that will be 10.0.0.24. But again, that will be the address that you were provided uh, during the installation or the address of your instance. You can also get this one by running IPA and that will be the IP of your server. So just make sure you remember that. And I almost forgot that and that's pretty important. So anyway, so I'm going to go back here to my WireGuard application. We changed that DNS server. So now I'm going to go ahead and activate it. And now that I have it active. One way to make sure that we are using the Piho as a DNS is if I go and I'm, I'm going to open the second terminal here. If I go ahead and run NS lookup pi.hall like this, and you should get the IP of your server. And that will show you that all of my DNS traffic gets routed through it. And if you take a look now, if I go ahead and deactivate it, now I'm no longer on my VPN, right? If I go ahead and run this command again, that's going to show me my home gateway. This is where my current DNS lives. So again, the way to make sure that you're getting through Pi-hole is once you have your VPN activated and all your traffic is going through your VPN to confirm that you're picking the Pi-hole DNS server, um, you can run this command and that will show you that you're using the server. And so now that we are going to our Pi-hole server, I'm going to go ahead here and refresh the CNN web page and this banner should disappear. This big ad that was here, you'll no longer see it. Sometimes it actually leaves the area where the ad used to be. This time it removed it, which is kind of surprising. It is kind of annoying when you're, especially when you're on a mobile device, it kind of leaves these big blocks of nothing on them. But in this case, interestingly, it cleared it out. But here you can see that there used to be a banner here and now it's missing and it just leaves this big blank area on the page. So basically that's how it works. It seems like it's working and it is blocking some of the ads at least. And then the next thing I want to show you is you can go back here now to this web interface and you can go ahead and take a look at your dashboard. And as you can see, we already have 269 queries that were blocked just by accessing on uh, the CNN web page. And if you go ahead and click here on the list of blocked queries, it's going to show you all the queries that got blocked. So you can kind of keep track of what got blocked and you can also see which clients made the request. Again, if you remember, we set up the highest level of login. So we collect a lot of information here, but you can see that the client with uh, 10.16.0 to try to access something that was blocked and you can go back here on your server and in here you should be able to see which client that is. So for example, if I cat my phone configuration, this is client 03. So if I go to my other device, which is my Mac and I access my, um, let's see, I have to do cat here. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't see that. I have to pull this window up a little bit. So as you can see here, I looked at my iPhone configuration file and this is device number three. Now I'm going to look into my Mac's configuration file. So right like this. And as you can see, this is the client number 10.16.0.2. 
And again, if I go back to here, you can see that this is the client that is trying to access all these blocked addresses. And you know, you have an option here. You can whitelist them if you want. You can go here, you can see a list of clients that are accessing it. So you're gonna actually have to add the client. So for example, here's that 10.16.02. Then you can add those clients to group and you can block um, sites or allow sites based on the client group or client itself. And there's a whole bunch of other things that you can do, but the purpose of this video is not to do a review of PyHole, but just to show you how to install it and make it work with your WireGuard. So I hope this video was useful to you. If you liked it, please click on the like button. If you have any questions, make sure to comment on the comment section below the video. And if you wanna see more of my videos, go ahead and subscribe for my channel.